Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Adam and this is Friday Sews. So this week I've been working on quite a few things. I've managed to get quite a lot of sewing done. Um, my first thing that I made was the Monterey zip jacket, which is a Sinclair pattern. Um, I had a few issues trying to get the zip in this because the the way that the pattern tells you to do it is a little bit confusing because you create a loop with the facing attached to the top of the collar and attached to the ribbon around the bottom of it and then you basically have to insert the zip inside the loop um, but I used a French terry um, fabric for this which is got French bulldogs on it this is um, a fabric that I got from Fabrics by Penny, it's a community group on Facebook. Um, the zip went in eventually after I'm picking it about three or four times. Um, and it has a facing on the inside and a bound collar. Um, the pattern is a, a nice pattern to put together. Um, if it is something that you was looking at making, I would try and put the zip in first before attaching the facings. And the way that you add um, the ribbon to the bottom of it is a little bit confusing. It's something that I would probably do differently next time. I would probably insert the ribbon in one piece rather than inserting one side, flipping it up and then and then top stitching the other side down because it doesn't allow for a very neat finish on the inside. You end up with a raw edge, which I'm just, I'm, I suppose you could probably cover stitch, but I didn't think of that. Um, so that is the Monterey Zip Knit Jacket from Sinclair Patterns. The next thing that I made this week was I downloaded the Ellie and Mac Sew It Forward Socks pattern, which is a free pattern on Ellie and Mac at the moment. Um, I just used some scraps of cotton lycra that I've got um, to make some of these socks. Uh, the only thing I have an issue with with this is the... The heel, if you don't catch the seam in the right direction when you're attaching the main part of the sock to the main front part of the sock, you end up with like a caught seam in the corner, which then isn't very comfortable. Um, so I do need to jiggle around some of the placement of the pattern pieces as they're going together. But the, my only issue is, is because they're overlocked, you then end up with quite a lot of a bulky seam on the inside. So it's something that I will have another go with with some other scraps of cotton lycra that I've got. Um, they do fit well and the sizing on the pattern is good um, and they, they go together really quickly and then you just attach a um, you just attach a cuff around the top of them. So that's the Ellie and Mac Sew It Forward Socks Free pattern. I will um, put the links for all of these patterns in the description box below. Uh, the other thing that I've made is the Chelsea top which is a free pattern from fabricstores.com I think it is again I'll link the pattern below this is a textured burnout cotton um I'm pretty sure it's a cotton but it does feel like it might be a cotton blend it was a remnant that I picked up from Molly's of Kensington uh, and you add a bound neckline to it which I created my own bias tape for that but Stupidly, I created the join right at the front of the top. But the fabric is too lightweight to unpick it and do it again. So I think this will be a good test garment to see if it fits the person that it's been made for. And it has these knife pleats in the front to give it some shaping with the same knife pleats at the back. And then you have a double fold cuff, which I've just anchored at the top and the bottom with some little hand stitches. It is part of their linen collection, so it does recommend that you use a lightweight linen for that, but that fabric that I used is quite a, a lightweight cotton, and I thought that because it's quite soft and it has got a good drape, I thought it was probably the best thing that I had in my stash to do it, rather than buying linen and then having the problems that I had with the bound neckline. The next thing that I've managed to get through this week was a another Kai t-shirt uh, which again is a Sinclair pattern that I mentioned on last week 
um, video. The fabric that I use for this is a burnout jersey. It has these sort of burnt out sections on it that have a sort of mesh fabric behind them. It's I believe it's a polyester blend and I used a cotton lycra for the neckline on there which is all cover stitched the same as the sleeves. This is for my husband and it fits really well. Again the Kai t-shirt is something that I've made quite a few of. At the moment I'm in the process of getting rid of all of our ready-to-wear clothing and replacing it with handmade t-shirts because they fit better. That fabric was from a group called So Essential on Facebook. The other thing that I finished this week is the Sinclair Oliver Knit Polo. Pattern is really, really easy to follow for a polo top. The way that they do the placket is brilliant. This is the same as the pattern that I made last week with the grey polo with the Harry Potter collar that was on it. This is made from a organic cotton lycra. This again is from Fabrics by Penny Community Facebook group. Uh, it's an, as I say, it's an organic cotton lycra. It's a full way stretch. I think it's about 220 GSM, so it's really, really good um, weight for polos. The sleeves and the collar and the contrast placket are a made by Poppy cotton lycra that are Wizard of Oz. This was from Fab Fabrics, which is run by Carla Richardson. Um, I will link her down below. Her She has a sh an online store and she also has a Facebook group and she does live sales as well. And that was something that I had to have when I saw it. I've had the, I did manage to get some of this from another D stash a little while ago. So the collar on this, because of it being cotton lycra and you have to top stitch the whole way around the edge, I recommend using spray starch and putting quite a few layers on because it does stabilise the collar even though it's interfaced with a lightweight interfacing, it stabilises the collar really well so you can get a real clean finish on the collar when you're top stitching. This I did on my cover stitch, the edge. Um, so you can see the, the looper thread underneath. Uh, in future, I will cover stitch it, but just with a chain stitch, which is something that I sh probably should have done with this one, but it was one of those afterthoughts. It has a bound collar to enclose all of the raw edges on the inside of the collar. This is just a grey uh, poly cotton bias tape that I had. Uh, I seem to have a lot of different poly cotton bias tapes and cotton bias tapes. And for the inside of a collar that you don't really see, something just to cover the... Um, the raw edges is brilliant. So one of the other things that I've made this week is the pumpkin cushions, which is a free pattern, which I will link below. This is part of a competition that I help run on the Fabrics by Penny community Facebook group. So these are part of the October competition. These are both made from cotton woven. Uh, the stalk on this one is a William Morris style cotton canvas and the green little bit on this one is Dashwood Studios. I had all of this delivered from Molly's of Kensington which was from a live sale uh, last week I believe. So there is a, this is a stretch mesh the same sort of fabric as what you would use for the edges of uh the the sort of side panels of bras and lingerie and different things um i believe it's a very lightweight power mesh but it's got this really nice polka dot it's almost a pink polka dot very very dusky pink on a black background i had some power mesh for the inside of sports bras because um, I want to try the, I believe it's the new Elliot Mac pattern that they've just launched. 
I got a burnout jersey, which is just a cream burnout jersey, which I'll make some t-shirts from. Again, the same with the grey rib knit that I've got. This is a, it's cross between sort of athletic and a normal sort of um, knit jersey. I believe it's a polyester blend, but it's a good staple colour to have in, in my stash. This is a another athletic material that's got a texture to it. I don't know whether I'll show on the camera. It's got sort of like a dimple sort of, t uh, sort of embossed texture to it. This is a remnant of a ponty, which will be great for accent sleeves on sweatshirts or hoodies. This is another athletic material, which I will use to make sports leggings. This next fabric is a brushed interlock stretch fabric. It is really, really soft. It's just plain black. It's got a soft, really, really soft texture to it. It's almost like a double brush poly. Um, which, when it arrived, I was really, really happy with the quality of it. The texture of the fabric is really, really soft. It's almost like a brushed cotton, but it's got a lot of stretch in both directions. So that was my order from Molly's of Kensington, which I will link below as well. I had a cotton lycra delivery from Fabrics by Penny. So I got the... I got two metres of the giraffes on a pale blue background. There is also, this one is a, a organic cotton lycra and this is made by Poppy. Um, design for, uh, de yeah, designed for you by Poppy. This is called the New Galaxy print. It's a really, really nice print and it's on sort of like a deep blue sort of charcoal-y coloured background with planets and the um, solar system all over it. I got a small remnant of a sort of denim blue and rainbow cotton lycra, which I thought would make really nice pyjamas for my nephews. And the one that I was most excited about getting is the Christmas Cotton Lycra, which has got Christmas llamas, Christmas dinosaurs, pigs with antlers, swans, parrots, roller skates, boom boxes. This is going to be Christmas pyjamas or Christmas t-shirts maybe for Christmas Day for as many people as I can get t-shirts out of. I think there's three metres of that. The other thing that I've been doing this week is I've gone through our wardrobe and I've thrown away, well, I say I've thrown away, I've put about three black sacks together of old ready-to-wear clothing, which I'm going to donate to the clothes bank recycling. These dungarees are something that I made quite a while back. These are made from French terry with wolves on them, which is from, again, it's from Fabrics by Penny Community Group. Uh, this is a pattern by, which was formerly made by Jack's Mom, which is now Waves and Wild. This is the Heydays um, dungarees, which are supposed to be made from a woven, but I have made them quite a few times with French terry. Uh, and I just put a, I put a full lining in the, front bib and the back bib which goes down the lining goes down to about here and then I just top stitched it to hold it down in place but I adapted the straps made them wider and sort of made them triangular at the back so that they can be used with dungaree clips instead of the buttonhole and knots that the pattern calls for normally uh, this is a Kai t-shirt from Sinclair Patterns uh, and this is made from a cotton lycra fi fabrics by Penny Community Group. This is, I don't think this one's organic, but it just gets softer and softer the more you wash it. 
So moving on later on this week, I'm looking at maybe making a few more of the Dean sweatshirts by Bobbin and Buttons. Um, and I also need to make some new slippers, which is the Midnight Slippers, which I've made before. And I think that's all that's happened this week. I've now got to try and find a home for about 15 metres of fabric, which could be a bit of an issue. Thank you.